Batman vs. Superman, the Ultimate Edition, is the definitive version of the film that should have been released into theaters. I saw the theatrical cut back when it was originally released, and while I enjoyed the film, I felt that it was flawed. Uh, I did a review of it back then. I'll put a link down below if you want to hear. But honestly, don't even bother with the theatrical cut. What strikes me as odd is when Zack Snyder put the movie together and he screened it for the Warner Brothers executives, the version that they saw was his director's cut. And there was rumor that went out about how the executives gave the film a standing ovation. They loved it. And so I don't understand why here's the version that they really enjoy. This is, hey, that was great. Standing ovation. And then, okay, cut 35 minutes out of that. So here's the thing before I go any further. If you saw the theatrical cut and enjoyed it, you're probably going to love the ultimate cut. If you saw the theatrical cut and hated it, there's a good chance this isn't going to sway you. That said, I'm going to get into some spoilers to talk about the differences between the theatrical cut and the director's cut. Really what I feel that uh, they fixed with the film. So if you haven't seen the Ultimate Cut yet, uh, it's on direct video now, but really the only option is to buy it. And at this point, it's so close to the Blu-ray being released. Just wait and either rent it or buy it. But at this point, it's too close to spend the 20 bucks just to get a digital copy of the movie. Okay, first off, even though the movie's longer, because of the new edit, it flows so much better. That was one of my problems with the theatrical cut. Because of the choppy editing, it felt a little disjointed, and I thought that it felt overlong. But with this, with the new edit, I believe it's 30, 35 minutes of new material, and everything is kind of back in place. It's uh, in the proper order, and they inserted the scenes that were supposed to be there to help the movie flow along better. Because look at the theatrical cut, and it's like so scattershot all over the place because they had to cut out so much that you kind of lose focus on some things and with this the new cut is so good and everything flows together so well that it keeps you invested so it's a longer film but it felt shorter with the theatrical cut i wasn't crazy about jesse eisenberg's portrayal of lex jr He didn't feel menacing enough, and there wasn't really a lot of explanation uh, as to what was going on, what his motives were. And in the ultimate cut, we actually get that. They showed how much he was manipulating things behind the scenes. There was a whole huge subplot about how Lois was investigating the bullet that she got from the Africa sequence. While she was investigating this, it kind of showed that there were certain people in positions of authority that were afraid to get involved in this. It also showed how Lex was manipulating both sides, how he was trying to sow public distrust of Superman, as well as making Batman to be thought of as evil. In the theatrical cut, Batman would brand his victims, and while they were in prison, they would get murdered. It was almost like the bat symbol was like a target. So in the theatrical cut, it made it seem like Batman wouldn't do the killing, but he would brand these people, they'd go into prison, and they'd get killed. In the director's cut, it showed that Lex was paying off other prisoners to murder anybody who had the bat symbol sowing public distrust of batman because now batman would brand somebody they go into prison they get murdered and it makes it seem like he's complicit in this in the theatrical cut there's the guy in the wheelchair that lex luther gave him and superman's there and the building blows up and he couldn't see the bomb and he had no idea why And in a scene that is baffling to me as to why they cut it, Lois Lane's on the phone with uh, one of the lab techs, and she finds out that the wheelchair, the inside of it, was lead-lined. So there was the bomb inside of the lead, which is how Superman didn't see it. In the theatrical cut, they made it seem like he was careless and he didn't notice. And the thing was, that was done so that Superman would start second-guessing himself. Like, he went in there and he didn't notice the bomb and all these people died. So he starts questioning himself, but he didn't know that the reason why he couldn't find the bomb was because it was actually hidden from him. They cut a scene with Steppenwolf, who's going to be the big bad villain of either the Justice League movie or possibly the next Superman movie. I'm not sure, but I know they kind of set him up and I didn't even know about it. I know after the movie was released, the scene with Steppenwolf, they released it online, but um, I somehow missed it. And uh, I saw it here and I was like, oh, that look, that's awesome. 
They extended the scene where in the future Superman becomes evil and Batman sees the symbol of Dark Side, and that really fleshed that out a whole lot and made it clear that was not a dream. It was a vision that he saw and Flash was coming from the future to warn him that uh, if they didn't do something that this was what was going to happen. It also showed Superman being Superman. Uh, I know a lot of people were complaining about how Superman wasn't being the beacon of hope that he's supposed to be. And in this, after the bombing of the Capitol building, Superman is carrying victims to the uh, ambulances. And in the theatrical cut, the building blows up and he flies off. And it kind of made him look like he didn't care. But in this, he actually was saving people and helping out the uh, paramedics. There was also a lot of other little things that helped to make the movie feel more whole. There was a lot more interaction between Batman and Alfred. There was more scenes with Wonder Woman. And overall, there was so much more character development. It just felt complete. The Ultimate Cut was R-rated, and things were a little bit more violent. Uh, Batman broke some bones here and there. And there was a little bit of language, but it didn't feel like they were making it R-rated for R-rated sake. It just felt like this was the world that they inhabited. It was a little bit darker, and consequently, the movie was made to adjust to that. Batman vs. Superman, the Ultimate Edition, the Ultimate Cut, this should have been the only version of the film that was ever released. I know there's some people who didn't like the theatrical cut, and I think that uh, there's a lot of people who just simply are going to hate this movie regardless. Not saying that there aren't people out there who legitimately don't like it, but I feel with the ultimate cut, if this was the version that would have been released into theaters, we would have had a lot more positivity from the get-go, and there wouldn't be so many people that were detracting from it, because a lot of the comments, a lot of the complaints, a lot of the reviews are these little things that were addressed in the full version of the film. It's just mind-boggling that they would kneecap the film like this. I understand that a three-hour movie is a tough sell, but when you've got a gigantic movie like this, why wouldn't you want to release the full version? It's not like three-hour movies always do bad. Titanic was over three hours, and it was the highest-grossing film for over a decade. And there's been plenty of movies that have been three hours long that have done well. They've uh, done well financially. They were critically acclaimed. Braveheart, The Green Mile, Return of the King. So it's not like this is a foreign concept. It's not like this is something where, oh my God, if we have this movie that's three hours, it's destined to fail. It's going to be a tougher sell. But when you've got something like Batman and Superman together in a huge budgeted film that is going to be setting up the foundation for the eventual Justice League, why wouldn't you want to release the version that got a standing ovation from your own executives? I don't understand Hollywood sometimes. So if you saw the theatrical cut and were disappointed, I really think you should give this another shot. For me, the theatrical cut, it was a movie that I enjoyed, but probably wasn't going to be in my top 10 of the year. Now, with the ultimate cut, this is absolutely, positively going to be in my top 10 of the year. 